Because oh, man. Yeah. I have to say that eating sea rations is easier than doing all this. <laughs> if I was in combat and had to do all this, I'd throw it out and eat an apple if I had one. Hey, welcome everybody to our MRE dinner and a show. Thank you for joining us. We've been looking forward to this evening. I hope you all have your MREs. Looking over the guest list today, I just see that I, many of you, even though you're veterans, probably have not had an MRE. So uh, I'll be very curious to see what you think about them. If you want to take your MREs now, it is dinner time. Let's open them up. And while you're opening them up, Let's watch a little how-to video that was recorded by the Chirac family. So this is Mike Chirac's wife and his two daughters who are opening the MREs and learning how to heat them up. All right, let's read the directions. Number one, remove MRE pouch and paperboard sleeve. This is your paperboard sleeve. Tear off top of bag. Place MRE pouch in bag with heater. Oh, so that's this. While holding MRE pouch and heater above lines on bag, pour water in the bag until it reaches the level between the lines. Tear here to use bag. There's a little tear at the top, so you tear that to open it. That's all I got so far. So you got it open, take your little food pouch. Take your food pouch and stick it in the bag with the heater. Wait, this is a heater? Have you ever done no, this? No, you're not supposed nope. to take no? that out. Okay, so hold the MRE above the line. Okay, so you gotta, it's in the bag, but hold it so that it's not down at the bottom. Is the heater on the bottom? I do have an engineering degree. And then, Put the water in. Okay. Slide the heater and MRE to the bottom of the bag and fold the top of the bag to the side opposite of the heater. Stuff assembly into sleeve with top of bag folded over. Oh, yeah, I just need the, the box. I just realized there's a diagram of it, so now I get it. Okay. So, you go like this. It's just to just lean it over something like a rock with the MRE on the bottom in the water, but I don't have a rock, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so everybody open up their MREs, take it, unpackage it all. I have to say that eating sea rations is easier than doing all this. <laughs> I watched the video, it's very, not that one, the one that was the demo one. This, that young fellow was doing it, I'm thinking to myself, get the hell out of here. Uh, I thought I would just say a few words about the history of military rations, because after all, an army marches on its stomach. That is the famous quotation attributed to Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, also, I think attributed to Caesar and everybody, uh, any other military leader uh, the past thousand years. Let's let's go with our senior uh, veterans here. I know Julia Parsons is with us. As you many of you know, she's a Navy wave. She's 99 years old. She worked on Enigma, decoding Enigma, wow. uh, breaking the code. Yes. How are you, Julia? I'm doing fine, just fine. I find this very interesting because I I have had sea rations. Um, we had to do a, a couple of overnight things. Uh, along the way, and uh, they were not very good. These are all very good. Everything is delicious. And what are you having tonight? I'm having tuna fish and all kinds of little goodies and crackers and cheese. And, <laughs> and how is it so far? Very good. Good. Oh, that's very wonderful. Good. good. So you give the MREs a thumbs up. I absolutely do. This is fantastic. I know that we have Roland Glenn. He would, I guess, be our second oldest at 96 years old. Army, here you go, Roland. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, Todd. I've just uh, finished a delicious meal, uh, a tuna noodle casserole. Um, and on the outside of the package, it says Stouffer's. 
the reason I got there is that I could not follow the instructions on the um, um, cheese tortellini with tomato sauce. <laughs> I wish I had a can of uh, sea rations right now. I, I'm sure that the nutritional value of the MRIs are, are top notch, and I applaud all the research that went into it. If but you I, haven't when met I Roland, that package, I just couldn't follow <laughs> what to do with the various parts. Who else wants to give a review of what they ate? Todd, I made a special meal for you. Uh oh. This is 35 year old meatballs oh, no. with barbecue sauce. Oh, a no. big Let cracker, me, a big cracker with apple jelly. And it smells horrible. I can barely hold it by my face. And this is some sort of old pound cake, but I'm going to bring it to you. You opened up that old 35 year old MRE. <laughs> yes. And ready, this is, this is my, they came with the greatest little packet, right? Uh, like accoutrement. So one thing I was surprised, I loved it. Ready? The matches that came with my toilet paper and gum still work. <laughs> <laughs> what are you eating, Katie? I had the um, Southwest, Southwest black beans and something, I don't, beef, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it actually wasn't terrible. Uh, it was really, really salty, like really salty. So I guess that's something that they do, you know, for the soldiers. Like, I guess like, salt is a good thing, right? I guess, yeah. I mean, you need salt, but not too much of it. Because on top of that, they gave like a whole extra huge like packet of salt. And then um, I didn't need this yet, but this is um, apple pieces and spiced sauce, which I haven't had. I think it was supposed to go on the cake that I already ate because I totally ate the cake. <laughs> Those are amazing. <laughs> hey, Jack, Jack Watson, or uh, Iwo Jima Marine, how are you? I'm well, Todd. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't be with you. Can, can you hear him? <laughs> Tell him about cooking the food in the helmet, Dad. Oh, they came up with a, a ration that was called 10 in 1. <laughs> and it was enough food for 10 people, 10 men. And they didn't tell us this. All we knew, we found a package of this stuff. So we started to cook it, and it was rice. <laughs> if they had water, and the more water we would put in there, the more rice we had. We ended up with helmets full of rice, boots full of rice. <laughs> we had everything full of rice, and it wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, James, 15 years, 75 years separated from, from when... Jack Watson was in the Marine Corps, but you're in the Marines. Food was, was yeah. does it become an obsession when you're in Iraq and Afghanistan? Um, it becomes an obsession at all times. So I was in the field a lot. So we would eat a lot of MREs. Like it, it became routine. And you, you started to become a chef. You, <laughs> you knew which, which MREs had what. You started to um, break into all the MREs. There's a, an elaborate term for it that I won't use because it's just improper. Um, but you used to ravage through all the MREs, break them open in the boxes, and then be able to put them together as you see fit. So little things you learn like the peanut butter. Everybody remember the peanut butter. The, which, uh, I see all you have. A, which one is that, Lauren? It's your favorite, the cheese spread. Right? Yes. You, always... <laughs> yes. You, you used to fight for the cheese spread, but you wouldn't only, you'd only eat <laughs> eat that towards the end of a field op so if it was a week-long field op i'd be eating everything with peanut butter and then that last couple of days eating with cheese because we're in the field we're stuck in the middle of the woods and the last thing you want to do is have to use the facilities when there are none <laughs> i sat down right here beside my computer i started looking at all that stuff so i ate the uh white wheat snack bread i ate that I ate the applesauce, I ate half the Skittles, <laughs> and I'm going to cook the elbow macaroni and tomato sauce in a pan in the kitchen, and I'll take the sauce, the cheese sauce that comes with it, and I'll do that in the kitchen also. Then the chocolate milk, I'll probably never use. <laughs> so how was the food in the Coast Guard and the Merchant Marine, Francis? Excellent. It was excellent, really? Excellent. It really took good care of us. Andy, Andy Glade, how's your dinner? Well, I'm chewing to eat peanut butter right now. <laughs> it was a beef brisket. It looked very different. 
kind of like a glob of uh, gravy, <laughs> but there was beef in it. Uh, the potatoes weren't bad. Um, I want to make it a every night meal. <laughs> I have to see how it, you know, how would you say, uh, how it evolves over the evening. <laughs> sure. Yeah. How it, how you digest it to this. <laughs> How about, how about you, Larry, Larry Jones? Um, well, I had a no-brainer where I didn't have to cook. And I think had I had to cook, it might have been a lot more challenging. But I had number 21. And number 21 was tuna lemon tuna, pepper. Right, tuna chunk and light water pack lemon pepper. Now, you know, I invited three of my children to come and uh, participate in eating. Yeah, do you see me? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. So what do you, what's your opinion here of the MRE that you got? So it took me a minute to figure out this, this stove, but I'm, I'm totally fascinated by, by you know, how this works. You just pour in water and it's a chemical reaction. That thing got really hot and it was smoking. It gets really hot and it stays hot for a while. And yeah, you just pour water in the bag, then you put your uh, MRE into the bag. And you don't have to put that much water in it, and it heats it up easily in, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So what's your review of the vegetable crumbles? So this is, a, you can see my dish here. I'm showing, squeeze it out. It's not bad. You know, it is very salty. A lot of people have reported that. Um, it's yeah. very salty. It's, it's very heavy on the, uh, the black bean, so it's a very black bean heavy dish. It reminds me if you ever ordered anything that's like a black bean stew or a black bean chili, it tastes a lot like that. I'm impressed that you accepted your father's invitation to join us for dinner. Second of all, so what'd you think? What'd you have? Uh, Asian style beef strips with vegetables and sauce. My kids took one sniff and ran from the room. <laughs> um, they're not coming back. And uh, they ate all the cookies and the uh, applesauce wasn't too bad. Very sweet. And I'm drinking the hot chocolate. That's the best. You like that? Okay. So yeah. what did you have tonight? Me? Yeah. I had the uh, chili and macaroni, number 10. Oh. And um, there was good news and bad news in that because I, I had one of these before. As, as Todd mentioned, I had one with my daughter uh, to be recorded just as somebody who's I'm, I, I'm not in the service. I've never had an MRE. So, you know, we did that the other night. And you had a tough time opening the beef stick, the Slim Jim. Yeah. And that, you're going to write a letter to the to the Army, right, about it? No, probably not. No, it was, <laughs> once I got it open, it was really good. Like today, I had that uh, that beef brisket, and, and, and I ate that and the um, uh, au gratin potatoes that came with the cheesy. And, and they're pretty decent. The cappuccino, it was lousy. It was so loaded with sugar, 15 grams. Oh, my God. And I, and I added up all the calories, so I consumed 970 calories, you know, which is, uh, I'm going to have to get some extra mileage in tomorrow. Yeah, and the, the beef stew was excellent. Uh, being a non-veteran, I loved, I loved every bit of it. Um, I, had, I had peanut butter and jelly uh, with the bread, which was excellent. Um, uh, pretzels, which I dipped into the peanut butter. The coffee got better, maybe, uh, as, it, as it sat. Uh, overall, I was really impressed, and uh, I can't wait to, to bust open this other one. I have cheese tortellini and tomato sauce. Uh, that, to try that too. That's right, because we're doing a series. That's a good segue. We're doing a series uh, for YouTube called Vets Eats, where we have veterans and non-veterans eat various MREs and kind of give a review. Um, you know, I don't live far from you. Had I known I was going to get number 15, uh, the Mexican style chicken stew, I would have like let you throw me something else off of your front porch. Um, because Mexican food doesn't digest well with me. So um, I did eat it though. Um, and it was tasty for what it was. Um, Tasty for what it was. For okay. what, for what it, what, um, we call that a backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed that M and M's were in there. There's applesauce, oh. which I love, peanut butter, which I love, 
chocolate hazelnut. Uh, I feel like that's a gourmet uh, hot chocolate packet. I'm going to say oh. that. So you were in the Marine Corps for nine years. You ate your share of MREs, correct? I did. And you know, you know, some of the people I work with, they played tricks on me. They had me looking in boxes for steak and lobster and, and just all kind of things that I didn't even know <laughs> didn't exist. Oh, uh, well, I, I had number 15 also. My wife and I had number 15, the uh, Mexican style chicken stew. And we same, same what Haya had. Yeah. What do you think of it? Oh, we liked it, uh, uh, but we had different. We had, uh, everything different was is we had uh, fruit cocktail, some crackers, pretzels, and a chocolate uh, bar, you know, it was, um, you know, a, a protein bar. But, you know, we're, we're in the Air you know, my daughter's in the Air Force, you know, and as I said, what we're doing, you know, you always have to have wine with your meal, and after a long day of golfing, you know, <laughs> you know and, Yes, Air Force people, you know, we have to have flowers, <laughs> have the candles. Um, and you have a little bear next to you? Yes, that's my daughter. That's the avatar for my daughter and then the Air Force. So, um, I had the uh, chicken pesto pasta, which I have to admit wasn't too bad. Uh, I'm not so sure that if I knew what it was that I would order that in a restaurant. But um, all things considered, I, on a scale one to five, I'd give it about a two and a half. And I had Asian style beef strips with vegetables and it, they, my heater didn't work too well. So it was kind of lukewarm to cool. And it kind of looked like one of those things, those pictures you showed before. The dog. <laughs> oh, God. But, but we did get a package of patriotic cookies. We thought, what in the world is that? And what is that? We turned it the right way. It's Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had number 13, which was a cheese tortellini, and I have to say it wasn't bad. Uh, the sauce wasn't like mama's, but, you know, it was okay. Look what they still put in there. Toilet paper. Yep, yep. It wasn't a bad meal. However, I did use these to open it, because I don't know how you do that in the field. So I gave Mike a Lithuanian MRE. What'd you think? I thought it was great. It was great. I thought it was great. It was beef stew, which was really good. Is there any vodka oh. in here, Mike? What's that? Any vodka? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but it, I tell you what it had. It had a bar of Lithuanian chocolate from a company there called R-U-T-A. I think it's it pronounced Ruta. And it's and it was, I remember that chocolate from when I, when I spent a little bit of time over there. And it, so it was like gourmet chocolate bar in the MRE. It's fantastic. Yeah. You gave mixed reviews of what you had. You're well, kind of a foodie, though, so you might, you're a little picky. This beef patty looked like a chunk of Spam, only dark. And then I had two flour tortillas, a pack of mayonnaise, and a pack of barbecue sauce, and a packet of cheesy bacon spread. So I don't, I'm not sure how all this was how supposed, supposed to, to go together. <laughs> yeah, I had the... Uh, Menu three chicken noodles and vegetables packet, but after uh, opening it up and sorting through all this stuff, I decided to eat the peanut butter and crackers. I don't know that I'm going to play around with this right now on the Zoom. I think I'll do it some other time, but for right now, I'm into dessert. <laughs> so I got the fresh strawberries. Did anybody else get fresh strawberries? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> the food with, that I had was good. My the one uh, muffin was just crumbs. Yeah, you said. Let's see. You had ravioli. Yes. Well, yeah. Would you? How do you eat in Korea? Would you have in Korea? Oh, I don't know. It was some pepperoni or something like that. We used the cigarettes to uh, get better food. Yeah. From whom? Some of, the, some of the young kids that didn't know any better. <laughs> I went, I was drafted at 23 when they come in at 18. Big difference. Big difference. We had, well, I had the white chicken chunks, which was actually not bad. And Sid had the beef tacos, which he did not heat up because he was running late. So he ate the other half of my chicken. And the chicken chunks look pretty unappetizing. And I just know that because my niece ate one last night. 
um, in the bag, but you add the buffalo sauce to it, right? I did. I put the buffalo sauce on it, and they really just tasted like the canned chicken that you buy at the store. Okay. So this is what I thought. The, I had a chocolate chip cookie that was a gourmet cookie, actually. And it was fantastic, and it was not broken. It was delicious. I was shocked. And then I had the beef and beans taco. And this is what I would say. If I was in a war zone, it would be fabulous. <laughs> but as a spoiled, <laughs> pathetic civilian, no. And Donna, yeah. hi Rick and Donna. How are you? It's good to see you guys. I know you put some chats about your reaction to the uh, MREs. What did you think? Good? <laughs> one thumb up and one thumb down. <laughs> Very good. What did you eat during World War II? Went to my aunt's house and she would give us a loaf of homemade bread that was sitting in the cellar, had all kinds of molds around it, you know, but that didn't matter. We just chafed the mold off and we ate the bread. Big loaf, six pounds of bread. But right now I could go for a good piece of that homemade bread. The person who's really probably most responsible for the research and development of the MRD is this man, Dr. Abdul Rahman, the father of the MRE. He was the scientist, the food scientist, who worked in, at the Army Research Center at, uh, at um, Natick, Massachusetts, in the lab. Uh, Dr. Rahman passed away uh, 20, 25 years ago. Um, but we do have his son with us tonight, and we also have his nephew to talk about the wonderful work that their father and uncle did. It's good to see you. You're joining us from Florida. I am, Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland, and, Florida. Uh, it's an honor to be invited to join your group. What an impressive group and, and event. Your father, uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman, is credited with many patents, including yep. freeze-drying food. Uh, yes. He's the one who developed freeze-dried food, which is, you know, which is something that NASA, I would imagine, maybe still uses. I mean, that just revolutionized the food industry. Freeze-dried foods, dehydrated foods, and decompressed foods, and combinations thereof. Um, yeah, he, he was involved in, I mean, of course, he was part of a huge team that developed this, but yes, he was integral in all of that. Um, and, space, and the space food project, I used to have tubes of space food when I was a kid. You know, I, I don't know, how, let me think. When did we land on the moon? Um, was it? Uh, 1969. Okay. All right, so I was eating space food before we, a lot of people saw it on TV, because I was about four, I think, at that point. Yeah, I was, I was born in 64, so I was five. Um, but um, I would bring samples to show and tell as in elementary school, and they'd have um, like green beans that were um, in the size of a stick of chewing gum. And I would put them in a bowl of water and poof, we'd have a serving of green beans. <laughs> And back then, that was just like magic. That was sorcery. Uh, nowadays, people have seen that. But 50 years ago, no one had seen that before. And um, I remember uh, my grandmother, who was an excellent cook. She was from Hungary. My mother was from Hungary. And um, they met when my father was at a PhD school in Oregon. Um, <clears throat> and so my father gave her this hockey puck-sized um, de uh, decompressed spinach disc, like a hockey puck. And he said, this will feed 25 people. We had a big gathering at the house. And my grandmother, you know, she knew he was a brilliant scientist, but what does he know about cooking? So she threw it in the pot and nothing much was really happening. So she threw two more in and um, looked away and came back and there's spinach all over the stove. <laughs> yeah. And so you were a guinea pig, you and your cousin Eric, who's also with us today, were, uh, were kind of guinea pigs as young kids, right? C cousin Eric is now a colonel in the U.S. Army. Hey, Eric, thank you for joining us. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Good. I appreciate you, um, you, you joining us and to talk about your uncle. What do you remember kind of growing up with these uh, proto-MREs? Yeah, I absolutely remember being a guinea pig. Uh, you know, Butch kind of covered some of that stuff, but, you know, I had a vivid memories, you know, when I was a child, you know, uh, Butch said he would bring back samples all the time. So we'd have the, you know, uh, the freeze-dried ice cream was the one I remember. It was just literally like, it looked like a, a, like a, a 
bar, like a sponge, like a hard sponge. And you just chew into it and you're like, what am I eating? And all of a sudden this whole thing just like whoops, right up, right up in your mouth, you know, and, and this is what they were giving the astronauts at the time. who were doing the, the, the NASA missions uh, in the early eighties, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it was pretty neat to, to know that he was working on that kind of stuff. And I, don't, I don't know if you have the picture there, but, um, you know, some of the memories I also have are, are the pictures he had with General Westmoreland, where he's showing him in, I think it's 1968-69 era, uh, the prototypes that he had for the MRE. Uh, let me ask you, you're many years in the Army. You're a colonel now in the Army Reserves. Uh, how many times have you kind of brought up to people, hey, you know what, my uncle... He's the father of the MRE, or do you kind of like try and play that down a little bit? Uh, every once in a while, you know, I think when you, when you hear soldiers complain that that haven't been in very long and that weren't in long enough to know what it was like before them, you know, I remember in my early days uh, before the MRE was really you know taken off, just the, the mobile kitchens of the MKTs that they would have, and they would take you know the big sea rats and, and cook them up, and uh, but, which were, were also uh, you know fantastic. Uh, but it's it's really amazing to see, you know, how far it's gone. How did you convince Butch's three kids to join the Army? And if you were a good uncle, might you not have suggested maybe the Air Force or the Navy? Well, we got new uniforms now, you know, right? So, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty good looking. They throw back to the World War II, so... <laughs>